Scamming the public out of $750 million is a crime that the FBI frowns upon as much as any. Doing so by taking advantage of a global catastrophe during which millions of people's lives are at risk is an act that sinks to another whole new level. Alas, wherever there's an opportunity to take advantage of something, the fraudsters and the crooks are quick to pounce. That was exactly the case with Christopher Paris, a man who exploited the Department of Veterans Affairs and made a mockery of the American health and emergency response systems. It didn't take long before cunning FBI detectives managed to track him down. So how did the scam work, who fell for it, and how did he wind up giving himself away? Let's find out. This is Christopher Paris, the 39-year-old Atlanta resident responsible for a scam that not only intended to rob the good American people of their basic needs, but also sent the Department of Justice into a fuming rage. After discovering Paris's twisted actions, the Department of Justice made a statement. <clears throat> We will not tolerate this conduct, especially when it involves this kind of egregious attempt to target and defraud our nation's treasures, our veterans. During such a trying time, the government was adamant on its stance to those who tried to take advantage of the harsh circumstances. U.S. District Attorney Timothy Shea made it crystal clear. Quote, My office will devote whatever resources are necessary to stop scams aimed at exploiting Americans during this unprecedented pandemic. End quote. One such a scam, orchestrated by Paris, was constructed with the intention to secure orders from the Department of Veteran Affairs for 125 million face masks and other personal protective equipment for PPE. The value of such necessities fell into the $750 million ballpark. Paris made promises to a number of businesses that he could obtain millions of genuine 3M face masks from domestic factories. Those businesses were desperate, so they paid him the money. But in reality, the orders were impossible, and Paris's claims were nothing but empty words. In simple terms, he was trying to sell something he didn't even have. Clear, blatant fraud. It's no secret that 2020 has been a tumultuous year. And as far as it all seems, we're not even close to being done with its wrath. The impact has been felt across every corner of the globe, far wider and far more penetrating than any of us could have ever imagined. Close to 5 million people and counting have been directly affected, found across every habitable continent on Earth, and spanning at least 187 countries and territories. Schools have been closed, sporting seasons have been suspended indefinitely, the majority of flights have been grounded, businesses have shut their doors, and the world is dealing with record high levels of unemployment. So for Christopher Paris to attempt to exploit an already treacherous situation, that hit the nerve for Homeland Security and the FBI, and they were determined to bring him to justice swiftly. The early months of 2020 has seen demand for PPE like never before. It is almost unprecedented, with individuals and companies doing whatever it takes in order to get their hands on the necessary equipment. Millions of face masks, gowns, gloves, and sanitizer bottles have been required in an incredibly short period period of time. Make no mistake, Christopher Paris was well and truly aware of this. Knowing that companies and governments were on their knees begging, Paris seized an opportunity to exploit. Whenever a case like this makes headlines and stops the rest of the world in its tracks, everyone hears about it. And let's be honest, it's pretty much all you hear about. Just as events like these can show the remarkable unselfishness of human nature, it can also highlight the exact opposite. As terrorizing as this event has been in and of itself, when a topic is this widely known and this continuously talked about, it can be squeezed and manipulated, and it has been. When there's an opportunity for a criminal, a fraudster to take advantage of something, they will. That was Stephen Morell, chief of the FBI's financial crime section. He's a man who has spent years following the patterns of financial fraud, so he knows what he's talking about. This isn't the first time he's dealt with people like Christopher Paris, but it was one of the first times he's seen someone criminally victimize veterans and those in need. In a similar vein of thinking, that's exactly why the most popular time in the calendar year for tax scams, be them online or over the phone, is right around the same time as the actual tax deadline. That's the topic on everyone's mind, and it's an easy access point for trickery. So even though 2020 has been turning people's lives upside down with an ominous destructive health scare, we've actually been affected in more ways than the obvious. As tough as it is to believe, and as much as it makes our blood boil, some criminals have been capitalizing on the chaos and sending out all kinds of virus-related scams with the selfish intention of lining their own pockets. As the internet continues to expand into every aspect of society, online scams are growing not only in numbers, but in sophistication as well. Nearly 100,000 attempts of phishing are reported each month worldwide, based on the numbers coming out of the Anti-Phishing Working Group. 
We know that Paris made false promises of PPE in order to swindle three quarters of a million bucks, but how did the FBI actually track him down? Aware of shady business happenings all over the country due to an array of counterfeit masks and cleaning products popping up in every corner, the Department of Homeland Security Investigations, an arm of the Department of Homeland Security, led a nationwide crackdown. Dubbed Operation Stolen Promise, the Department of Homeland Security Investigations team opened up more than 370 cases. One of those cases was that of Christopher Paris. From his home outside Atlanta, Paris was claiming to represent a company called Encore Health Group. We know that he was trying to sell not non-existent 3M respiratory masks and other protective equipment. But the red flag that led the investigation was not the amount he was trying to offload, but rather the price. One of Christopher's targets was a company located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The company in question had already done business with the state and was trying to help government agencies buy PPE. So, this company contacted the Office of the Inspector General at the Department of Veterans Affairs with the purchase plan that Paris had presented to them. However, that's when the sirens started to go off. The department was suspicious of the price. It was about 15 times what they were accustomed to paying for similar products. With an inkling that something was shady, the department phoned up Homeland Security. They made a few phone calls, did some digging, and were quickly linked to Paris. Even though he'd been caught red-handed, some of the damage had already been done. The U.S. government seized more than $3.2 million from his accounts a sum of deposits already made thanks to his fraudulent activities. The authorities also said that a bank account controlled by Paris received more than $1.1 million. As we mentioned, almost 400 investigations were opened up during this time. Christopher's targeted companies and government entities, but others took advantage of individuals, small business owners, students, and employees. Allow us to introduce you to Alicia Coles. She and her husband, like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of others, had their lives turned upside down in 2020. Not solely as a result of mandatory lockdowns and restrictions, but because of scammers. Their furniture installation business had gone from booming sales to no bookings at all. To count after the lack of income, Alicia signed up online for a government loan program, only to be hit with a phishing attempt that tried to use her application to steal her identity. People like Alicia have fallen for all kinds of scams. Some websites have been advocating that apps can track infected people in your area and thus help you know which spots to avoid. However, as soon as you install the app, it shuts down your phone and demands a ransom. In this case, $100 worth of Bitcoin. There have also been extortion threats, with criminals demanding payment and hovering the threat of physically coming to the victim's door and transmitting the virus. Then there are the phone scams. Give this a listen. We can qualify you to get a free diabetic monitor and a complimentary testing kit for coronavirus. Even celebrities are getting in on the scamming action. This is Keith Middlebrook, an actor who claimed that he had developed a cure. Considering that hundreds of world-leading medical companies are funneling billions of dollars into treatment, do you really think a B-grade celebrity would be the one to figure it all out? Of course not. At this stage, there is no cure, and as punishment for his outlandish claims and related actions, Middlebrook was charged with wire fraud, accused of promoting a false claim, and taking advantage of the mass media focus in order to lure investors toward his company. Now that you've gotten a bigger idea of the huge spoke of recent scammers, let's swivel our attention back to Christopher Paris. The authorities did finally catch up to him. Part of the reasoning behind his capture was actually his prior record. This isn't Paris's first attempt to bend the rules, nor would we be surprised if it were his last, that is, if he manages to walk free from prison. Between January 2012 and June 2018, Paris, together with his business partner Perry Santillo, engaged in a giant Ponzi scheme scamming close to 1,000 people out of a total of at least $115 million. These ongoing tricks lasted for years. What was his method? Persuading his victims, people who already trusted him, to turn over their savings to his Rochester-based company, Lucian Development. He promised great investment opportunities, which in reality did not exist. The pair would pay old investors with new investor money and scrape plenty off the top for themselves to live their own selfish, lavish lifestyle. Santillo would brag about their splurging. The likes of $150,000 weekend trips to Vegas and $10,000 suits, all while draining their victims' life savings. Perry Santillo pleaded guilty to three charges. One, conspiracy to commit mail fraud. Two, mail fraud. And three, conspiracy to launder money and faced up to 20 years in prison. It was a similar outcome for Paris. He actually orchestrated the entire PPE fraud while already facing up to 20 years behind bars for the previous Ponzi scheme. 
So for Paris's more recent exploits, he faces wire fraud charges, the maximum statutory penalty of which is 20 years in prison, alongside a $250,000 fine. Remember, that's on top of the mail fraud and money laundering charges he was already facing from his shady Lucian development days. As it stands, Perry is currently awaiting trial, but all signs point to a significant time penalty behind bars. How about you play the role of the judge for this one? What do you think is the appropriate sentence? A slap on the wrist? Life behind bars? Or something in the middle? Share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, thank you so much for checking out The Richest. See you next time, and have a great day.